Welcome to our lecture online. Now we'll talk about reactants. Both capacitors and inductors can have reactants. We have capacitive reactants and inductive reactants. And the units of that should be ohms. And here we have the definition of ohms. That's the units for resistance, which is equal to kilograms meter squared per second per coulomb squared. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that these two have the same units as resistance. But first you may say, well, how do you know that that is the units for resistance? Well, if we use Ohm's law, we realize, and let's put it up here, Ohm's law says that the current through resistor is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, which means that the resistance is equal to the, to the um, ratio of the voltage divided by the current. Now, what are the units for voltage? Well, the units for voltage is the units for electric field times distance. So if we're going to get the units for that, voltage would be the units of electric field, which is newtons per coulomb, times distance, which is meters. And of course, the unit for current is amps. That means that the units for resistance have to be newton meters per coulomb times amps. Now, we don't quite have what we have over there yet, but we know that a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared, and, a, and an amp is a coulomb per second. So we can get rid of newtons and amps and see what we get. So this is equal to kilogram meter per second squared times meter, so we'll make that meter squared. We have a coulomb down here, and an amp is a coulomb per second. So coulomb per second, that means second goes to the numerator. And notice that this second cancels out that second. We have coulomb squared, so sure enough, kilograms, meters per second times coulomb square is indeed the units for ohms, which is the units of resistance. Now we have to show that this will give us the same thing. All right, well, frequency, we know what that is. That's one over seconds. What about capacitance? Well, capacitance, by definition, is equal to the charge divided by the voltage. And the units for charge, that's equal to coulombs, and the unit for voltage is newtons per coulomb times distance. So newtons per coulomb, that makes coulomb square. Uh, let's see, newton per coulomb times distance, which is times meters. So this would be the units for capacitance. The units for self-inductance, L, L can be defined as the uh, number of turns times the flux through the coil divided by the current, I. And the flux through the coil well, that's over here, that's Weber's, which is Newton meter per amp, and divide by the current, which also has units of amps. So that means that this would be Newtons meters per amp squared. So now we have the units for, um, for in inductance and the units for capacitance. Notice again, I used a little arrow there to, to show that this is the equation and these are the corresponding units for that. So now let's go ahead and find the units for capacitive reactants. So it would be one, let's go here. So unit-wise, we have one divided by two pi, of course, doesn't have any units. Frequency is one per second. And capacitance now, notice, we have Coulomb squared per Newton times meter. So uh, that means we have Coulombs squared per Newton times meter. Of course, these all will go into the numerator, and let's see here, we have one over second, we have coulombs, all right, that's correct. So we can then change that to Newton meter seconds per coulomb squared. All right, so a little algebraic trick, move what's in the denominator, in the denominator to the numerator, and now we're going to convert Newtons to kilograms meters per second squared, so this is equal to kilograms, meters per second square instead of newtons. We have meters, we have seconds, and we have coulomb squared. Now you can see that this second cancels out this second, and then when we simplify that, we get kilograms meters squared per second times coulomb squared. And notice that's the exact same that we have over here, which means we did find the units of resistance which is the same as the units for reactants. All right, now let's do the same for the inductive reactants. Here we have 2 pi FL, which means the units will be as follows. 2 pi 
There's no units associated with that. F, we have 1 over seconds. And then we multiply times the self-inductance. Now the self-inductance, uh, where are we here? It's Newton meters per amp squared. So Newton meters per amp squared. Now an amp is a coulomb per second. That means that this can be written as uh, Newton meters in the numerator. We have seconds in the denominator. Amp is a coulomb per second. So amp squared is coulomb squared per second squared. That means second squared goes in the numerator. This cancels out that. Now we convert to Newtons. That gives us kilograms meters per second squared. And now we still have a meters here that makes a meter squared. We still have a second in the numerator. And we still have a coulomb squared in the denominator. And then this second cancels out that second. And finally, again, you can see that this is equal to kilograms meters squared per second times coulomb squared. And notice that is indeed the units for resistance or ohms. Just like this is equal to the units of resistance, meaning ohms. And there you go. That's how we do that.